In this video, I'm going to teach you how to validate your strongly typed settings classes using the Fluent Validation Library, and then I'm going to show you how to integrate everything together inside of ASP.NET Core. I'm going to briefly explain how to use data annotations for validating your settings classes before we dive into Fluent Validation. I have a GitHub settings class in my solution which contains three properties that are mapped from my application settings JSON file. I'm also defining a constant representing the configuration section that contains these values. And you'll notice that I'm decorating each property with a data annotation attribute. And this is what I'm going to use for data annotations validation. So in this case, I'm saying that the access token and the user agent are required. So is the base address of the GitHub API. And I'm also decorating it with the URL attribute, which is going to validate that the base address is a valid URL. To configure this with ASP.NET Core, here's what we have to do. We're calling add options and specifying our setting class. Then I'm calling bind configuration and specifying what is the configuration section that contains these values. And this is the important step where I'm calling validate data annotations. This is going to check for any data annotations that are present on the settings class and perform the required checks. And I'm also using the validate on start method, which is going to validate my settings when the application starts so that I don't get an unexpected surprise at runtime. I'm using the GitHub settings when configuring my typed HTTP client to access these configuration values and pass them to the HTTP client instance. Now let me show you how this validation works if any of the required fields are not present. For example, I'm going to update the base address to be something that is not a valid URL. And if I go back to the program file, I'm going to add a try catch statement around the call of the run method. I'm going to move the run method inside of the try statement. And if we catch any exception, I'm just going to log to the console and let's see what we're going to get if we start the application. So I'm going to run the application and you can see that we have the options validation exception being thrown because we are validating our options when the application is starting. And you'll notice that the message for this exception is data annotation validation validation failed and it says that we are checking the github settings class and the member with the error is the base address and you also get an error message saying that the base address field is not a fully qualified url having something like this running at startup is very powerful to make sure that your settings classes are properly configured however the approach using data annotations is very limited and I'm going to show you how fluent validation can make this process better. I'm going to leave the try catch statement in place for later and let's start by introducing the fluent validation library to our project. So I'm going to look for fluent validation and the library that I'm going to install is the fluent validation dependency injection extensions because I want to use the assembly scanning capability to register my validators. So I'm going to install this library and I'm going to configure it with dependency injection straight away. So here I'm going to say builder services, add validators from assembly, and I'm going to specify the current assembly by saying type of program and then accessing the assembly value. This is going to scan the current assembly for any validator implementations and register them as scoped services. I'm stressing again that these will be registered as scoped services and you'll see why this is important when we try to implement the options validation using the Fluent Validation Library. So with the Fluent Validation Library installed, Let's go ahead and define our validator for the GitHub settings class. I'm going to add a new type to my project, which I will call GitHub settings, and then we're going to append validator. I'm going to make this class sealed, and I'm going to implement the abstract validator base class and specify the GitHub settings as the type that we are validating. Now, how you add validation rules with Fluent Validation is through the constructor where you have access to the rule for method and then you can define an expression to access the property that you want to validate. For example, I want to validate the access token and then I can chain the validation rule that I want applied on this property. The access token should not be empty and let's apply the same rule for the user agent. So I'm going to select the user agent property and add the not empty rule. I'm going to do the same for the base address. 
So let's select the base address and then I'm going to say not empty and I'm going to add another validation rule for the base address to check that this is a fully qualified valid URL. So first I'm going to select the base address and then I'm going to define my custom rule by calling the must method. It allows me to specify a custom predicate that's going to perform the validation on this property. So I have access to the base address from the GitHub settings class and I can call the URI type and the try create method. I'm going to pass it the base address and then I'm going to tell it what kind of URL is this. This is an absolute URL to the GitHub API and we're going to grab the result of this method in an out parameter which I'm going to discard. Because this method is implementing the try pattern, it's already going to return a Boolean value which is going to exactly match what we need for our predicate. I'm also going to add a condition that this validation should only run when the base address isn't a null or empty string. So I'm going to add a condition for this by saying not string is null or white space and then specify the base address value. So I'm basically separating these two conditions. I have a not empty check here and I have a check for my base address if it's a valid URL or not only when the base address is not empty. So let me add one more thing to this rule which is a message. The not empty rule is already built in with fluent validation and I'm going to specify a custom message for my custom rule. So I'm going to say name of GitHub settings and access the base address property. And then I'm going to say that the base address must be a valid URL. So this is my GitHub settings validator and now I need a way to run this validator when the application starts. We need to add a class that's implementing the iValidateOptions interface. So let's go ahead and define a class like this. I'm going to add a new type to my project and I'm going to call it Fluent Validate Options because I'm implementing the iValidateOptions interface so I want my type to follow this naming convention. This class is going to be generic and my generic argument is going to be T options. I'm going to implement the I validate options interface and I'm also going to add a generic constraint that T options is a class and now we can go ahead and implement our interface. You'll see that it only has one method called validate which accepts the options name for named options and it also gives us the actual options instance that we need to validate and check if it satisfies our rules. I'm going to inject two services inside of this class and the first one I'm going to need is the iService provider. I'm going to use this to create a custom scope inside of the validate method that's going to allow me to resolve my validator service. The other thing that I'm going to need is a string for the name of this options type. So let's go ahead and generate our constructor with the required fields and now we can go ahead and implement the validate method. First I'm going to compare that the name that is specified here matches the name of our options type. If it doesn't we can skip the validation. So I'm going to say if the name field is not null and the name field is not equal to the name argument that we got in this method, then I can return a validation options result of skip. So if the names don't match, we can go ahead and skip the validation. Then I'm going to add a guard clause using the argument null exception, and I'm going to call the throw if null method if the options instance that we received is null. So after we get past the guard clause, we can go ahead and implement our validation. So I'm going to start by creating a new scope using our service provider. So we call the create scope method and then I'm going to use this scope to get my validator instance. So I'm going to say scope service provider get required service and I'm looking for an instance of I validator which is coming from the fluent validation library and I'm also specifying T options as the specific validator that I need. Then I can go ahead and run my validation by saying validate and passing in the options instance. If the validation result is valid, we can return a validation options result of success. Otherwise, the validation has failed and we need to return a failure result. So let's start by collecting some information. I'm going to say options, get type, and grab the name to see what is the type that we are validating. Then I'm going to create a list 
to hold the errors of the validation failures. So I'll say new list of string, and I'm going to iterate over the validation failures on the result object. So I'm going to say for each, and then I'm going to say errors add, and add a message inside saying validation failed, and then I'll say which property this failure occurred for. So I'm going to say type, and then place a dot, and specify the property name from my validation failure object, which exposes the property name. And then I can say, what was the validation error? So I'm going to say with the error, and then specify the failure message from my validation failure. So I'll say error message, and this is enough to specify my validation errors. And then I can say return validation options result fail and pass in my list of errors. And this is how you can implement the validate method. If this looks familiar to you, it's because I got the idea from Andrew Locke's awesome article about this topic on his website. And I'm going to leave the link to the article in the description of this video so you can check it out in the written version. Having said that, let's go ahead and add the next component that we need. And this is an extension method on the options builder type. So let's go ahead and create another class, which I will call options builder extensions. Now I'm going to follow the convention for the same method that uses the data annotations and it's called validate data annotations. So let's create another method and we're going to call it validate fluent validation to register our fluent validate options for the specific type. So I'm going to start by making this class static, of course, because I need to create an extension method and the static method should return an options builder of the options. So I'm going to make this generic and let's call the method validate fluent validation. We're going to give it a generic argument of the options and then let's go ahead and define the arguments that we need. I'm going to add the options builder itself. We're going to give it the generic argument and let's call it builder. And I also need to add a generic constraint that the options is a class. And what I need to do now is use the options builder to register a new service. And this is going to be a singleton service for the I validate options interface. So I validate options, and then I'm going to provide our fluent validate options instance as the I validate options implementation. I'm going to use the overload that gives me access to the service provider so that I can say new fluent validate options, and I can pass in the service provider, and then I can use the options builder to specify the optional name for this options instance. And this is everything that I need to do to implement validation with the fluent validation library. So now let's go ahead and replace the call to validate data annotations with validate fluent validation. So we replaced what is going to run the validation. And if I start the application again, let's see what we're going to get in the console. Our validation seems to be working because we got the options validation exception. And you can see the message that we just defined in our custom validate options implementation. So the error message says that the validation failed for GitHub settings base address with the error base address must be a valid URL. And now I want to show you one more improvement you can make to the setup that we have in place now. We can replace all of this with a simple extension method. So let's go ahead and define a class for our service collection extensions. So let me call it service collection extensions, and it's going to be a static class and I need an extension method on the iService collection interface. I'm also going to return an iService collection back. And let's call this method add options with fluent validation. We're going to give it a generic argument representing our options instance. And I need an iService collection instance to call the methods that are required. I'm also going to add a generic constraint that the options is a class. One more argument that I'm going to need is the name of the configuration section that we are going to use to bind the configuration values to our strongly typed settings class. I'm also going to take the code that I have in place here. I'm going to copy it and let's use it here by saying services and I'm just going to call these methods and let's replace the GitHub settings with my generic the options argument and I'm going to replace the GitHub settings configuration section with the configuration section of this method. And now I can return my services instance after adding my options. And how I'm going to use this is by going back to the program file 
and saying builder services and we call the add options with fluent validation method I'm going to specify my GitHub settings type and I need to pass in my configuration section name. And now my call to this extension method replaces all of this here. It's going to run my Fluent Validator and also execute it when the application starts. And just a small reminder that I'm relying on the add validators from assembly method to scan my assembly and register any validator implementations, including the ones for my settings classes. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to smash the like and the subscribe button. And until next time, stay awesome.